Okay, good morning, ladies and gents. We're going to go ahead and get started with our next lab, which is going to be yeast breads. More specifically, dinner rolls. Now, I love this recipe, not only because it produces you know, great loaf of bread, it's a good introduction to bread baking in general. And you get this bread, uh, this roll that is a bit soft, nice and pillowy, a little bit sweet, but is also good not only for serving at the table, but also using for sandwich bread. If you want to make hamburgers, this is a perfect bread to make. As you can see, nice and soft, nice and pillowy, and really delicious. Okay, now this is going to be an example of a rich dough. So a dough that has quite a bit of fat and richness in it. So on your mise en place sheet, you should already have the ingredients as far as the measurements uh, on there. So you don't need, so we don't need to spend a ton of time. Just to review, make sure that you are looking at the right recipe. It is one and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast. 10 ounces of uh, room temperature water. Now, this you may need to adjust this a little bit um, depending on how the dough comes together. 0.3 ounces or one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. 2.2 ounces or a fourth of a cup of sugar. Quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Two tablespoons of the potato flakes. Now that is in your ingredient kit. If you do not have the potato flakes, that is okay. You can use an instant mashed potato mix. That is totally fine. Now in this recipe, we're actually gonna be going with dry milk instead of going with whole milk. Um, here we're going with 0.6 ounces or seven tablespoons, or sorry, seven teaspoons, my bad, of dry milk one egg, and then 1.9 or six tablespoons of, of uh, softened shortening. Softened or even slightly melted. Now, I would recommend in this case to go with shortening. Shortening produces, while it doesn't produce as much flavor, it does produce a much softer roll, which is kind of what we're shooting for here. Now, you can go with butter, that is okay. Um, you just want to make sure that this is soft and at room temperature before you add it into the dough. You also, because butter has a little bit of water, you're probably going to need to add a little bit more flour to this. Um, so again, that's why I would go with shortening. And then in our bowl is our main ingredient where most of the flavor of this dough is going to come from. 16 ounces or about a little more than three cups of all-purpose flour. Now, this amount is going to change a little bit as we kind of knead this together. So make sure you have a little bit of extra flour just kind of on standby to kind of sprinkle over the dough uh, just in case it needs it, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and begin. So first step here is you're going to bloom the yeast. Now, while we are using instant dry yeast here, it's still a good idea to kind of mix it into some water just to kind of hydrate it, get the um, dead cells that are on the outside of the yeast, kind of wash that away. So in this mixture, I'm going to add in the yeast, the dry milk powder, and the potato flakes. I'm just going to mix that together. Now, the reason why we are going with dry milk instead of just using, say, 
a thing of milk is because we are going to we are adding more dry milk powder than we would need if we were to be making our own milk. That's because the sugars that are in milk and also some of the other flavors like kind of like lactose and other sort of flavors that come from the richness of milk. We want kind of a lot more of that. So we're adding a bit more milk powder than we would need to kind of add that extra sugar, add that extra flavor into the dough. So. Okay. Once I have that together, I'm gonna just put this to the side for about three, five minutes, just let the yeast kind of hydrate and uh, kind of balloon. All right, while that is going in my other bowl, I'm going to add in my flour, salt, sugar, and baking soda. Okay, so, the two steps we have done so far are bloom our yeast and then mix together the dry ingredients. Okay, let me just make sure and check the camera, make sure everything is still going all right. Okay, so far so good. All right. Okay, now at this stage, I'm just gonna wait a couple minutes just to let everything kinda set and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so now it's a couple minutes later here. Um, while I'm just waiting for the last few minutes here, Couple things that you're gonna need, just kind of thinking ahead, part of your meats and plus. You're gonna need a container or a bowl to proof this in. Now, if this bowl is clean, you can actually just, after the dough comes out and you kind of knead it for a little bit, you can put the uh, dough right back in this bowl to proof in the fridge. However, uh, you can use a bunch of different things. We have all sorts of mixing bowls. Now, what I'm gonna use here is I'm gonna use this container just because since it has numbers on the side, I can kind of show you what it looks like when the dough proofs up, okay? So you're gonna need that and some vegetable spray. If you do not have vegetable spray, then all you need to do is just coat the bottom of the container of the bottom and the side just with a little bit of shortening or butter, or grease or oil or whatever, okay? All right, so, so far we have our two steps. We have our yeast mixture ready to go. We also have our flour mixture ready to go. Now, keep in mind, all the ingredients that I've had so far have been at room temperature, okay? Remember, yeast will slow down with cold temperatures, um, which is kind of what we're shooting for or what we're purposely doing for the uh, retardation of the bulk fermentation, but uh, n you'd want to make sure that your ingredients are either cold or at room temperature. You do not want them hot. We are cooking with something that's living. If you have your water, your milk way too hot, the yeast is going to die. Okay. All right. So now we go into the third step, which is I'm going to mix in the egg into the wet ingredients. I'm just going to barely work that in. Okay, and part of the same step is I'm going to add this into the dry ingredients. Now, this is not the muffin method. Okay, the muffin method, we mix the dry and the wet together, kind of like what we're doing now. But the only difference here, or the big difference here, is that we are going to be mixing this a lot. So, I'm just going to mix that together. And really kind of work it together here. Okay. 
Okay, occasionally your spatula is gonna kinda get gummed up here. Just use your hand. Okay. And it's gonna start to kinda stiffen up here, as you can see. So you wanna mix this together until there's just about no more dry flour. Okay, still a little bit, that's okay. Now you want this dough to be sticky a little bit. However, you don't want it overly so. So here, you can see it's really kind of sticking to me. So I'm going to sprinkle over just a little bit more flour and stir that in. Make a little bit of a mess, that's fine. Okay. So the dough should kind of look like this, where it's stiff, um, you can work with it if you need to knead it with your hands. You can without the dough really overly sticking to you. That's what you should be shooting for. Okay. So now we're going into step four, which is kneading together our shortening or kneading the dough and then kneading in the shortening. So step four is you're going to knead in the shortening. Now, I would recommend at first, instead of using your hands to use a spatula or use a dough hook on your, on your mixer, if you have one, to just kind of knead this together. Now normally I would use my stand mixer here, but most people are not gonna be using a stand mixer, so I'm just instead gonna to do this by hand. So I'm kind of like folding the dough on itself, kind of pressing in the fat and the shortening into the dough. And you can see we're working with this a lot more than when we were working with quick breads. It's a bit of work, that's okay. You can use a wooden spoon for this. You can use a bench scraper, whatever. I'm just gonna knead this together. Now you're noticing the dough is getting a little more Sticky. A little stickiness is okay. Okay, but if it gets really sticky to the point where you can't really work with it, again, just a little dusting of flour. Okay. This is kind of where your feel comes into play. Some of you are going to add a little too much flour. That's okay. You know, it's all part of learning how to handle all these sorts of yeast doughs. It's completely all right. Okay. Okay. So, now that I kind of have my dough together, I'm going to go and simply shape it kind of into a rough ball to then bulk ferment. Okay, so, so far the steps that we have are number one, add the yeast into the water and the milk and the potatoes. Step two is to a bowl, stir together the flour, sugar, and the baking soda. For the third step, you're gonna add the egg into the yeast mixture, and then add that into the dry ingredients. And then step four is you're going to stir together or you're gonna knead in the shortening and you're gonna knead this together for about, you know, three, five minutes, okay? So what I'm doing here is when I'm kneading together this dough, with my hands, I am kind of folding the dough over and pressing it out. 
folding over, pressing it out, folding, pressing it out. There's no exact signs to this. You just kind of zone out here. You just kind of work the dough. If your hands become a little kind of caked up, you can just kind of rub your fingers together, clean them off. Okay, and just kind of, oh, that's my alarm. And I'm just gonna knead this together and just kind of zone out here. It's kind of one of those nice moments in a kitchen or just in life in general where you can just kind of zone out, kind of forget everything that's going on, and just kind of work with a kind of piece of dough. Now, if the dough starts to get overly sticky, you can kind of dust the, with a the little flour. Don't overdo it with the flour. There's people that like just like go absolutely crazy and just throw flour all over the place. You don't want that. You want the dough to be a little bit sticky. A little bit is fine. Okay. Too much so and that's not good. Okay. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of throwing a little bit of flour on my counter. And then when I feel the dough start to get a little sticky, I just kind of run it through and then knead it a couple more times. All right, when your dough is feeling kind of smooth and taut, we can go to our last step for today, which is to put it into a greased container and cover it. So I'm going to spray the inside of the container. I'm going to put my dough in. And just as important, so you're going to spray and grease the top of the dough. All right. So if I come around here. Okay, you can kind of see the level in which my dough is at now. If we have done everything right up to this point, then come tomorrow when we come back into the kitchen, we should, um, it should be doubled in size. All right, so that is it for day one. We're gonna go ahead and cover this. Just let it sit in the fridge until tomorrow, at which point the dough should be uh, proofing up. Now, come tomorrow, what you want to do, just because the dough is going to be very, very cold and very dormant, come tomorrow, you want to take this out about 30 minutes to an hour before we start working with it again. So, if we have, so when we come into class, if you're cooking, I would recommend, if you're going to be doing this during class time, I would recommend taking the dough out about 30 minutes to 60 minutes before um, class starts. That way your dough is kind of warmed up, it's a little easier to work with, and you'll have a lot better results, okay? All right, that is it for today. Make sure you have all the steps ready to go. Um, for those of you who are doing the alternative assignment, uh, make sure you head into the assignments tab, and that is it for today.